This is Sexy Funny Raw, where we talk all about the world of sex, from dating and relationships to the adult industry itself answering all the questions you weren't even brave enough to ask Google. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Sexy, Funny, Raw. I am your host, Sylvia Sage, and joined with me, not in studio, but from her home, the lovely MILF Performer of the Year, Reagan Fox, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for her. (laughs) Uh, Reagan is just one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, so I need everybody to know that. Um, I, we have been friends since the beginning. We go years back, at least a decade at this point. So yeah, today, last week, you guys, we were able to have a little bit more fun talking about role play and fantasy fulfillment, but this week we're going to go a little bit more serious because I really want to talk about this. I just did a show about this on another podcast, not this podcast. Uh, it was like, uh, misconceptions of the adult industry And this was done with a doctor and I feel like she honed in on it a little bit, but I feel like as actors being on the inside, we also know a little bit more about what is perceived by the outside world versus what we're actually dealing with inside. So let's get down to it, Reagan. I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. Did you get into the industry out of necessity or desire? necessity okay now tell us how um i the um housing market crashed and Mm -hmm. i uh was an appraiser for the banks and so i would go into the homes that were foreclosed on i would assess the value value for the banks and then they would determine short sale or to um you know how how to sell and so forth Mm-hmm. And uh, I did that, um, and it got to the point where my market started becoming saturated. There was only a few of us here in the area when the housing market busted, and then here came everybody. And so if I was making $300 a report, I would go down to $30 a report, and I started to not know what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. So I went into camming, and so therefore I was like only one year. Anyway, so that's how I started. I just... I needed a job and I thought I would go back into corporate America after the first year of camming. And uh, I was making so much money camming because I brought a different light where I was talking to people and engaging with the people and um, they liked me. And so then I just never left and moved into porn. Yeah. Easy move though. I feel like a lot of people start out in camming or something along those lines and then just get a fan base and move into porn. But I would say anyone that comes to me and asks, how should I get involved and how should I make a mark and how can I get recognized? And there's so many people in the industry now. I tell every one of them, Cam, that's how you're mm. ace. That's where you get your name out. And some people do and some people don't, but um, that's honestly where it's at. Yeah. At least to get a fan base for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Have your OnlyFans too. Have your Twitter. Just be active on everything. But that's how you're going to get seen by so many people is having your face out there on the cam. So. Yeah. So, okay. So you said you got into porn out of necessity. And I feel like I did the same. I needed money. I was really struggling in LA. And I had a friend who was working in it. And it was financially a, a way to stay afloat, basically. But... Mm-hmm. I've been in for 10 years now. You're 10, 11, 10? Same. Same. Okay. Together. So, but how do you feel now? Do you now feel it's still out of necessity or is it out of like fulfillment from the industry? Uh, now it's fulfillment. Now it's my, it's now it's my career mm-hmm. job. Yeah. Uh, so I shoot mainstream now to stay relevant enough stay in the mix enough. I mean, I don't, obviously I don't live in LA, so I I don't, I don't stay in the mix as far as the friend group and knowing what's going on. I I'm totally removed for everything. I have to see stuff on Twitter to even know what's going on, but to be relevant, to stay in the mainstream until I can still continue on with my other things because I, I do enjoy it. I have learned a lot from it, even though it's not something that I ever wanted to do. Yeah. I feel the same way. I had no desire to ever be in it. And in fact, when I moved to LA, some people I knew kind of joked and they were like, oh, well, you could always do porn. And I was 
like angry with them. And I was like, why would you ever think I would do porn? I thought I was so far above anybody who would ever do that. And now I find myself being like a, a visual anti for porn stars, you know, cause I'm like, we're such good people <laughs> <laughs> just shouting it from the rooftops anywhere I can. So yeah, it's a, it's a different place to be in. And I think a lot of people get into it out of, out of necessity it, it benefits some of us, myself and yourself included, and we were able to succeed. But I do say it's not for everybody. And I really think that not a lot of people really think through everything that porn is going to bring you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, Right. I've only known one person that has said that they have gotten into it for fame. And mm. that is not the right reason. And it's not working out. Oh, for really? That didn't work out for them? Not working out yeah. for them. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it is sex for money. So, of course, it's for the money. And all of us just enjoy having sex. For me, it's just kind of a a bonus, you know? <laughs> I was going to be having sex anyway, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> what percentage do you think of people who get in to the adult industry out of necessity? Like out of like dire need or to actually just want to be in the industry? I mean, that's a really good question. And I have never asked anybody that. So um, I'm, I'm not sure I'd be a really good answer on that. I feel like the guys that I've spoken to, the guys, I you can tell they all they all mm -hmm. say, I've always wanted to just be a porn star. They want to mm -hmm. fuck the girls. So I think the right. guys are different than the girls. Um, I think the girls that I see come in and then maybe they go right into other things that are easier mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know why they've gotten into porn. It's it's for money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like I haven't talked to any of the men in our industry who haven't been like, oh, I've always known this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, it, and it's always the men that are asking us all over the internet. How do I do mm -hmm. it? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. there needs how to do be, I get in? Right. There needs to be a, a, a standard post somewhere. Mm-hmm. Have pictures, naked pictures of yourself, small, front, back, hard. Can you come on command? You know, I yeah. mean, there just needs to be a post that way. And if you can do all these things then submit your stuff here. I always tell them, get a group of your friends together in a room and then time yourself jerking off. And I need you to at least last for 25 minutes minimum. 45 at best. And if you can do that and then come at the end of that 25 or 45 minutes, you could be a porn star. <laughs> you go. I love it. That's a really nice way. To that. <laughs> yeah. And then send your pictures front and back to an agency, but let's make sure you can come in a room full of strangers first. Right. <laughs> okay. So now that you're in the industry and I feel like both of us are happy with where our careers are, do you enjoy being your own boss? Oh yeah. Do I you find it stressful at all? Not anymore. I mean, okay. prior to COVID, I was traveling three weeks out of every month and that was really mm. stressful. You know, really as you're new and you're hungry in the business, you're working all the time. Mm. And then I, a little bit after COVID and now that um, the last year or two, no, I'm not stressed. Now I just, I get to pick and choose mm -hmm. when I work and who I, uh, you know, I get to say, okay, no, I, you know, who I want to work with, I guess. Um, I'm still very open to opening, working with new people and mm. um uh, it's a, now it's kind of a, it's it's fun. I stay relevant. I get to still meet the new people that come in, the new boys mm -hmm. or the young girls that I get to have sex with. And, um, and I get to help them. And, and maybe if they ask questions and, and now I can push that knowledge onto them. Yeah. It's fun working with the newer talent coming in because they do look at you like you're just this, you know, this prize to be had. They've probably been masturbating to you for a few years at this point, you know, and then here they are getting to have sex with somebody they've been idolizing. It's fun. And you're right. It is nice to pass knowledge on to them and, you know, help them grow in the industry as well. Yeah, it is really nice. I will say that I, the one thing that I haven't really liked is when a new guy comes in and, and they will immediately say, Oh, I'm so nervous. I've been masturbating to you forever. And, and then your immediate thought is, well, this is going to be a long day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and probably really awkward sex. We're yeah. going to have to just get through this. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So serious note here or serious question here. Do you think that it's fair and or I guess justified how the outside world views 
porn stars. I'm, I, I will say I'm mixed on this myself. So. I feel that today's world is much more advanced than it ever has been in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, so for me as an older person, I guess, I. Uh, uh, I think it's much easier nowadays. I mean, when I first started, even 10 years ago, when I first started and people within my own circle knew that I found out I had done this, they mm-hmm. spread it and they, it went all you know within their group and crossed state lines. And they spread this fact that I did this. They're all worried about my children. So, you know, um, I, I think, and now it's like tons of people within that community are all now within the swinger world are all also now content creators and trying to get into porn and so forth. So for me, I think it's much easier. The, the judgment that you got to, the judgment, you got to look at who's judging. Yeah. That's a great, great point. Uh, you know, cause I feel I, that's why I said fair and or justified because I don't want to say that I don't want people to look at porn stars and go, these are the greatest people alive, you know, because I, I do want them to know that we are sex professionals and it's a, it's an industry where not everybody should be, uh, mentally. It's a very, very hard place to be. Um, but I don't love the fact that, um, it's almost like we become less than for a lot of people in society and not worth even, a kind word. I don't want to bring up negative things, but um, a few performers have passed away here recently and it's been on TMZ. The articles have come out. And if you scroll through the comment section on TMZ or any other um, network that's broadcasting the unfortunate and untimely deaths of these porn actresses, the comment section is just full of disgust and hate and how she should be dead or, you know, they're going to go come on her grave or just just the most disrespectful things that you would never say to a person that you held with any respect, you know? And for me, I have a really, really hard time with that. Okay. And I, I haven't followed that story in the Mm. last but um, I did hear that she had checked herself in and it actually was mm. hospitals liable. They gave her something. And, and that happened to Olivia um, eight, nine years ago. She was with mm. my agency, young girl as well. There are a lot of girls that come in here and you can tell that they shouldn't be here. You know, mm-hmm. they come in for the wrong reasons, right? Um, and, and I do, I absolutely agree with you regarding um, how we are perceived. A few years ago, someone asked me for a Hollywood crush and I gave a name. And I tell you what, not even a month later, that one person did an interview and they they said that all porn stars were disgusting and um, um, deviant or it was. And, and I knew that that man had had heard my thing. Mm-hmm. And I was really appalled. So when I see him now, it just grosses me out. Right. Because how, mm-hmm. how could he be so rude like that? But we have to remember that the internet has a lot of social warriors, justice warriors. I don't, Mm -hmm. I, and, and I honestly, I stay out from it because Mm -hmm. I'm a very sensitive person and that stuff does really bother me. Mm -hmm. Um, But that is how our world is right now. Mm -hmm. I, I personally just think that it is way more accepted than it was 10 years ago. And I think Mm -hmm. that's where the world is going. I see more people around me surrounded with it. And um, maybe in another 10 years, it won't be as judged yeah. People think we're disgusting. Every time I'm asked about it, I always make sure I say we're tested every 14 days. People right. don't think like that. They don't really understand that all the people they're meeting at the bars probably are never tested. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and that yeah. all the, the procedures that we have in place to keep us all as protected as possible that we're all ha- having sex with each other. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. and for me, it's just the, it is the fact that we are adults um, having sex with other consenting adults and the consent has been put on paperwork on camera, you know, like we are doing it in the safest way possible. And for me, I have a hard time with the fact that taking money for sex seems to be the problem because when I was having sex and working in hospitals, trust me, I was having way more random hookups when I was 
uh, uh, x-ray tech in your hospital than I am as a porn star. Okay. And I was doing it a lot on safer. Uh, but I was, I was, you know, I was a good person. I worked in a hospital, you know, like you could trust me with your kids, but now I've taken money for it. And that's the real issue for people. Right. We've taken money and we've, we've turned sex into something that's negotiable as opposed to it's not negotiated on a date or in marriage or in any relationship ever. The, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hypocrisy of the whole thing is what really gets, gets to me, but yeah. And again, I don't want to be idolized. I don't want you to go to your baby girl and go, this is what you should grow up to be. But I, I, this baby girl chose to do this, you know? So I I just think that the world might be lacking, um, some decency and empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I think we're, we're experiencing that. We live in that, that world. An uptick. Yeah. I do think we're in an uptick. So I will say that. Okay. Do you think the legal age to work in pornography should be raised? That's a really good question. I, yeah, really good question. I've, and I've honestly never thought about that. Obviously my youngest will be 21 tomorrow. Um, I would never have wanted any of my children to have done it, but I would have supported them all along the way. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a personal choice. And is that even a question right now? Is it on the ballot somewhere? I wish it were. It's not. But what I just love that you just said, Reagan, was that you didn't, you would never have wanted any of your kids to do it. But if they would have, you would have supported them the entire way. I love those words because my dad has said those exact same words to me. And it means so very much because I think no matter what your kid chooses to do in life, whether you are happy about it or not, if you love and support them, like that's the best thing you can do for a child. So. Right. Right. Well, um, I lost relationship with my mom and dad because of doing this and really, yes. Um, wouldn't speak to me at all. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm an only child and Mm. so it was very, and they live in town and so it was, it was difficult, Mm. but it wasn't until they almost passed away with COVID that they came around and now I see them every night and, and, and so forth. And we have that relationship again. We just don't talk about it. And I know he knows, but he also knows that I am supporting m- this family. And so mm-hmm. um, you judge me for what you want, but mm-hmm. I, my, I'm not going to listen to anyone over the internet. Yeah. And anymore, good. I wonder if I can help it. Yeah. You're so, you are in a good place mentally then. I still get a little like... I, the comments sometimes still get to me, mainly if I'm bleeding that week, the comments get to me a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I dive back at them. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> those hormones start raging. Oh, man. I, 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 well, I had a partial hysterectomy on 15 years ago or so forth. But every yeah. time my girls start bleeding, I'm like, oh. <laughs> you feel their sympathy. <laughs> uh, I wish I could have a partial hysterectomy or a full hysterectomy. I just want it gone. It's amazing. Oh. Now, you want to do partial, you want to keep your, your ovary. Oh you know, your hormones and so forth. Oh, okay. It's amazing because, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm signing up tomorrow. I'm going to get my surgery. <laughs> Sounds so great. <laughs> okay. Have you ever, and I feel like we may have answered this uh, on the episode last week, but let's discuss it again. Have you now, or have you ever felt pressure to do something on set that you were not comfortable with? Yes, I have. And, um, but Thankfully, we worked it out. And uh, when I was younger, I had something happen and, and I allowed it to happen. Mm. Um, but then um, within the last few years or so forth, something did happen. And we worked it out, the director and I, and we got a, got a producer involved and it, the script was changed. Good. I feel like that is also a big thing now is you can revise the scripts. Is there is even something in the script you don't want to say? You're like, okay, let's just take this out because I'm not comfortable there and they'll totally work with you. So I, it has changed, thank goodness, from 
10 years ago to current times. Right. Yeah. And I always want other performers to know they can do that. You know, that you can stop the scene at any point if you're uncomfortable or whatever with verbiage, with the way someone's talking to you or touching you, anything can stop a scene, you know? So absolutely. And they're, they're putting me in a lot more roles where I'm a little bit meaner and, Mm. um, you know, I'm always asking, are you okay with this? Because this Mm -hmm. is really not my nature to be that way, but I, I, can do that. Um, so, but yeah, you, the consent thing, I guess is really big in today's. Yeah. Well, we're actors at the end of the day, people forget that we are actors. We're acting with other people who are also paid to be there acting mm-hmm. with us, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? So as uncomfortable as it may get for me or you to be playing mommy to these people, like these people have also been like, okay, I'm going to sign up and act like I'm a teenager, you yeah. know, and a lot of them are in their 20, late twenties, early thirties. So they all think that they're only going to f- have sex with beautiful, gorgeous women yeah. and wonderful scenes and so forth. And then they realize, no, you're, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing a, a five person gangbang with, yeah. <laughs> with one girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get to know your co-stars. <laughs> uh, okay. Has working in adult affected your marriage in any way, positive or negative? Um, I have been with the same person for a, a very, very long time. So I would say no. Uh, yeah. um, we have an understanding. There's not um, jealousy there. Um, this is this is a job. This is a business mm-hmm. here. Um, uh, we both work in it together to, um, you know, I'm not always handling everything and so forth. So it's a, it's a teeter totter back and forth. Yeah. I love that. I love seeing like happy, healthy marriages within pornography because it gives me so much faith because I do still let some of that outside noise in of people telling you, no, no one will ever love you. And like, you'll never be in a, a good relationship because of this. So I get in my head about those things. So it's nice when I do see people in like loving relationships and go, oh, it can be like accepted. There can be an understanding of working in sex and still having your relationship. Some people really have a hard time putting them in different compartments, you know, because there is sex involved. So I agree. I agree. And we do see that quite a bit with couples that come in. Some make it, some don't, Mm -hmm. some switch, go to different partners. Um, uh, and and I do worry, I not worry, but I it, it has crossed my mind. Should I be, you know, um, on my own again? I, I I am concerned. I mean, I can't say that I I see Tommy Tommy um, Guns, you know, comments, and you know, there's other people that have remained single. So, but yeah, it is someone I just haven't met met the right people yet. Yeah, no, exactly. I believe and- that. And healthy communication and true love and respect for each other can get you a really long way. So yes, yes, it's, it's nice to see. Thank you for being a role model. Oh, Uh, you just think he's fun too. (laughs) I do. I do. If you could change one thing about your career in adult, what would it be? Um, what would I, I probably would have, I would have said no a little bit more in the beginning. Mm. I don't, there's not, but you know, because I said yes and I did, I, I am where I am now. So that that's probably not a fair statement. Is there anything I would do differently? Maybe just, you know, what, maybe been a little bit more friendly with my co-stars, maybe just been a little bit more interactive. I'm not that kind of person to text all the time and so forth. So maybe that had a little better relationships. I do have really good, solid relationship with, Mm -hmm. with several people, um, you included as well. Um, but, but, but it could be more, you and I could absolutely be more, you know, so maybe something like, yeah, I can see that. I I've always said, um, you know, Zach, um, wild. He has a little book that he takes to set every set and he writes down the director, the name of the movie, his co-stars, everything. And I'm like, God, I wish I would have thought about that because I can't remember half of the scenes I've done. I don't know half of my scene partner's names. Like I just have the worst memory ever. And I feel like an asshole when I see people and I don't remember everybody's name. It happens so, to all of us. I mean, yeah. that's when you work so much and you like, I, I go to these award shows now and I'm like, Ooh, I think I worked with her and they come, hi. I'm like, oh, <sighs> I know. Her? No, I don't know. 
Zach will also have them write down like a little, he'll have his co-star write down a little bit about the scene as well. So then he always has, has that memory and mm-hmm. he's, yeah, he's, you know, he's always been like that. He's always been a journaler. And mm-hmm. when you come in and another misconception really quick before you have yeah. to, another misconception is, is that the people that come into the industry don't have any other skills mm-hmm. or knowledge. I can't tell you the people, the things I have learned from people, the way that the people eat, they being how healthy people eat. They bring mm-hmm. bags and nuts and they talk about this so far. The books that these people read, they, they bring in history. They can play the piano. They can play instruments. We go to these things. These people on set are, these actors are so well-rounded and don't, people so just true. don't understand. They just think they're this goofy person or they're just mm-hmm. person who spreads their legs. There's, there is a lot more to that. And I think that our fans would really like to see more of that side of us, not just the only fans tip mm-hmm. me, tip me, tip me for this. They want to see the th- fun things that we do. And I think the more that we as actors bring that in, the farther we'll go, mm-hmm. the farther you know, the more lasting relationships we build with our fans, the better off we are. I could not agree more. And I'm so glad you said that actually, because, and people don't realize that there are people in our industry with college degrees, uh, master's degrees, PhDs. I mean, it's, it's not the land of dumb dummies who couldn't do anything else in the world. The people who have succeeded in our industry are the some of the smartest people I know and have created multi-million dollar companies off of, like you said, it's spreading their legs, you know, like it's not an easy job to do. People really don't understand how much does go into it, how much of a business it truly is. And yeah, you're right. There are so many good, talented people. That's a huge misconception, honestly. Yep. There you go. Okay. Um, let me, I, we are running out of time, so I'm getting my best, my best, Best questions here. Okay. There is one fan question I don't want to forget because they did ask me. So since becoming MILF Performer of the Year 2023, have you gained more followers? Do you see an increase in your popularity? And if so, how much? Um, That's a great question. I honestly really did not see very much from it. Um, Last year when I won, um, I was coming off of like, um, I just, I, I had problems with my liver, I guess. And I, Mm. I was drinking and I was taking like 25 supplements a day to not get COVID. And I, and then I was still doing, you know, et cetera and, and and drinking Coke and stuff. And I think I just, I wasn't, I got sick and I got super, Mm. super skinny. So then when I won, I actually had some agencies say, you know, you need to put on some weight a little bit. And I was, I was super gaunt looking Mm. fit. And I thought, but I, I don't think that I really shot much the first part of the year. And, um, and I just really just tried to start gaining weight and trying to get, look a little healthier and so forth again, but it wasn't like I planned it. So I don't think that I gained anything. My numbers have stayed the same. And, um, no, I, yeah. I, well, I really, we got to change that, Reagan. That's no, crazy. But, but it was okay. It was a, I still had a great year. It was still yeah. shot. I shot what I needed to. It made me gain focus. I'm, I'm, I'm actually where I work every day now. So it's been mm-hmm. good that maybe I just had a little bit of a, a down year and, and I probably needed it because I was working all the time and I actually did work a lot during COVID. I came, I worked right up to the very end. And then I were, as soon as they opened, I was back right in it when nobody else was, I was having sex with a PAs behind this, you know, like as my talent on scene because they couldn't find a guy. So it, maybe this last year was good. To yeah. Just rest. Good. We all need that. Okay. Last but not least, what do you think is the biggest misconception of the adult industry? Uh, that I want to have sex all the time when I'm horny <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Agreed. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly think that, I mean, we've already kind of touched on a lot of the big ones. I think a, the big conceptions might be that we're dirty, that we don't mm. test, that mm. we're just walking herpes, AIDS, mm-hmm. STD people. Or maybe the misconception is, is that we're all dum-dums and we don't really know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. I think it is, for me, it's how the outside world views us because I always tell people inside the industry is such a welcoming 
group. I feel like we all really take care of each other and we're there to support each other. It's a zero judgment zone. Truly, when you get on set, everybody's there just to have a good time. I have so much fun going to set and getting my hair and makeup done and hanging out with everybody on set, making dumb jokes, and then getting paid to hang out with fun people and have sex all day. Like it's a it's a great place. I have gained a lot of self-confidence, you know, because of the people in this industry. It's made me a better businesswoman. Um, but yeah, it's how it's the outside influence of the world. Once you step outside our little comfort zone and you're like, oh, everyone <laughs> hates me. Okay. <laughs> I think that is the hardest part. And I want to make sure that everyone knows that when you see people struggling, when you see people, performers who are struggling with mental abuse or substance abuse or anything like that, it's not because of what the adult industry has done to us. It's what the outside world has. So right. that's my biggest takeaway. I think the bickering, if you see any bickering on Twitter, it is going to be either a bad relationship that's gone awry. And mm -hmm. they're usually the younger, maybe maybe competition between two individuals or so forth. And honestly, the best is just to stay out of it as best as you mm -hmm. can. I mean, mm -hmm. as, a, as a fan, uh, as, as a performer, try not to bring it on to Twitter mm -hmm. because all you are doing is enraging your fans to mm -hmm. fight the other one. And so I think if we could just there obviously, as you talked about, people. there are people in the industry that should not be there. But mm -hmm. and, and then they, they're without supervision, possibly for the first time. They all get mm -hmm. together in little groups and then they, they're unsupervised and they're going to mm -hmm. be that way. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's not honestly the industry we're in. It's just the environment you're right yeah. around it and so forth. Yeah. Well, Reagan, I really appreciate you taking the time to get very serious with me on some of these subjects. So thank you so much. Tell the people where they can find you. Um, I am on Minx, which is a variation of Sex Panther. You'll probably find me on either one. Um, as Reagan Fox, you can find me on, of course, X or Instagram and OnlyFans, Reagan Fox or The Reagan Fox. Beautiful. Thank you so much, my beautiful friend, for being here. I appreciate you so much. And as always, guys, if you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, adios. Adios.